Level Earth Observer is a serial flat earther. Sorry, sorry, demonstrable realist. He has been making content to try and refute the globe for years. And today he asks us about the blue marble photo and the land that time forgot. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable, encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malwares, and phishing attempts, and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you want simultaneously. The internet is a place that knows a hell of a lot about us. Some of us spending up to six to eight hours a day online. And that's why we should really care about our online data. Now you can use Surfshark to encrypt your personal information and send it via a secure VPN tunnel so no one can see it without your permission, which is really good for protecting things like your ID. ID theft is an increasingly common and scary crime, and you can use Surfshark and its Hacklock system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Hacklock will scan various databases of leaked information and then notify its users if their data is found so that they can take action. Secure your privacy with Surfshark. Enter the coupon code SIMANDAN for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals slash SIMANDAN. Right, on with today's video and the insatiable Level Earth Observer. He's looking at a news report of the Blue Marble, and he has some questions. Away we go. Check this out. NBC News. 40 years later, Apollo 17's Blue Marble leaves a mark on our memory. Boy, does it. I'll tell ya. We scroll down. Now, this is quite an old article from December the 7th, 2012. And we get to see this historical image in all its glory here. And what an image it is. I still think it's undebunkable. Now we'll have a closer look at this in a minute. This image from December the 7th, 1972, shows a view of Earth as seen by the Apollo 17 crew, Gene Sermon, Ronald Evans and Harrison Schmidt as they travelled towards the moon. The view extends from the Mediterranean Sea area to Antarctica. Okay, so we've got Antarctica coming up to the Mediterranean Sea area. Bear with me. Let's all be clear here, everyone. Adam thinks that he's about to debunk this photo. But let's all bear in mind that he used to think that elevation change debunked Earth's curvature. So have a look, what's the difference? On the journey, Elevation is, I go up 16,322 feet. I come down 16,312 feet. Wow. Difference of 10 feet. 10 feet of difference. You heard it here first, people. There's only 10 feet of difference between Weymouth and Aberdeen. Of course, what you fail to understand is that you're using elevation, which is a value given to the height above sea level. As you're making your journey from one seaside town to another, then of course there's going to be very little difference between the two. Come on then, Adam, let's have it. So here's the historical image from 1972. Here it is again next to Google Earth. Now this is the area I want you to focus on. The Gulf of Aden, but particularly the Red Sea, okay? We've just seen the Red Sea on Google Earth. And when we zoom in on the Red Sea, on the historical image from 1972, we see an awful problem here. It would seem the Red Sea, in the historical image from 1972, has a huge landmass right through the middle of it. No, it doesn't. Here is the original image from NASA's website. If we look at the area concerned, we can clearly see there is no landmass as you suggest. The Red Sea looks fine to me. Now, if we check the original article from 2012, then you can see that there is indeed a problem with the photo. What confuses me though, Elio, is that you accept NBC's version of that photo of the blue marble, but not the official NASA photo. 
In fact, if you search 1972 blue marble on Google, almost every single image shows the exact 1972 blue marble with the Red Sea looking just as it should do. And bizarrely enough, a mysterious body of water has appeared to the left of the landmass that's blocking the Red Sea. Google Earth, Red Sea, no landmass running through the middle of it and no large body of water to the left of it. The historical image from 1972. A huge landmass blocks the Red Sea. Whilst a mysterious large body of water appears to the left of the Red Sea. It's almost as if they put the water and the landmass yeah, in the wrong areas. What I do find interesting though, Level Earth Observer, is how you haven't thought, oh, I better check the other versions of the 1972 Blue Marble to make sure this isn't a one-off. You've just seen this particular photo, then straight away said, yep, absolutely dodgy. Kind of got mixed up. Did they do it on purpose? Quite possibly. But that is a very, very, very bad day for NASA and space fantasists and globe believers. This historical image, so-called globe proof, blue marble, has mugged all of you space fans and all you globe believers off. Except for those of us who've seen the actual 1972 blue marble and found there was no issue. Explain this huge landmass that's appeared in the middle of the Red Sea and explain uh, the large body of water that's mysteriously appeared to the left. Dear, oh dear. Well, he seems convinced, doesn't he? But we have explained it. It's a dodgy version of the photo in that NBC article. Now, two weeks later, Level Earth Observer hops back on his channel and discusses this anomaly again. Let's have a look. It's been nearly two weeks since I did the NASA's Blue Marble and the Land That Time Forgot video. And interestingly enough, no one has addressed that video. No one at all. And I want to show you why, because it gets worse. This can only mean worse for you, Elio. And I'm not really sure why anyone didn't look at your original video. Perhaps they thought that it was such a gaffe from yourself that they didn't need to. If you've not seen that video, definitely check it out first. We're essentially, an NBC article cites the blue, NASA's blue marble. The problem is, in that shot, the Red Sea has a mysterious landmass cutting straight through the middle of it. And bizarrely enough, we have a body of water appear to the left of the Red Sea. And as we know, this is not the proper 1972 blue marble. Very strange. Now that brings me to this article, The Blue Marble Shot, our first complete photograph of Earth. We scroll down and we get the same very strange landmass appearing to cut through the Red Sea. The same dodgy photo. Interesting. But what's great about this article, we actually get the photograph number from NASA's database, here we go. In the NASA archive, its formal designation is AS17148227. But it's commonly known as the Blue Marble Shot. So in this article, we've got the citation or we've got the, the actual photograph number. Yes, we do, and that is what should lead you to the actual image itself, Level Earth Observer. Now, what makes this very strange is when you go to NASA's website, we've got a different photograph. The correct one, when I say correct, the Red Sea hasn't got any landmass blocking it. Bear with me. And this is what you get when you type in that image number, or that photograph number to show you. Here it is. 
S17-148-227-27. And the Red Sea is correct here. Indeed it is. And let's remember here, this is the original photo, the first. Anything that comes after this, whether it be in an article or a website, is irrelevant. So what's going on? Oh, I should also add, when you type in Blue Marble Shot into Google, 99 out of 100 will be this. So what is actually going on? Where have these dodgy official Blue Marble Shots that have come from NASA and got official photograph, for basically official numbers for the, the photograph in question, the Blue Marble? And this right here is where you can really get a grasp of the mindset of a conspiracist. Adam is going to believe the one out of a hundred image, the glitchy image. He will think that there's an issue with the 99 other photos, the ones that are correct. He found one photo, his confirmation bias took over, and the rest is all that she wrote. But when you go to the website, it's a different blue marble. So did NASA clear up? Most of the, the, the blue marble that gave the game away with the Red Sea with the landmass and the NBC article and a few others like this, uh, the Atlantic Arctic article we looked at just now, kind of escaped that. And as a result of that, they're kind of sticking out like a sore thumb. See, told you. I mean, what, what's going on here? Obviously, we know the globe Earth's ridiculous. Science is, you know, it, there are no, there's no scientific demonstrations, no practicality, just stargazing fantasy. So we know the globe is ridiculous based on things we can test and verify for ourselves. That's long gone. But I find this fascinating, this blue marble shot with the Red Sea with a landmass going through the middle. We then get a citation from the Atlantic article of a number. And when we look in the database from NASA, we get a corrected blue marble. No, not corrected, an original. So like I say, did someone do this on purpose and send over the images to the NBC and the Atlantic and a few others? Uh, the photograph with the Red Sea and the landmass to give the game away? Or was the original blue marble done like that? With the landmass, let me go back to it, two secs. Or was that the original that was out there for many years, just mocking everyone? Well, using the Wayback Machine, I can go all the way back to 2006, and the Blue Marble Wikipedia page shows the correct image. It's never been changed because it's never been wrong. I tried to find some old school um, photographs or, or representations of the blue marble like on magazine covers and stuff and I just I couldn't find any get ready Adam to be debunked in spectacular fashion this is the front cover of the Christmas Eve issue of the New York Times 1972 and what do we have here the blue marble and the Red Sea is completely intact as it should be dear oh dear massively and totally debunked. Get in there! Well, there we go. What an ending that was. What do you all think of LEO's argument there? Let me know in the comments below if you'll think he will recover from this one. Thanks so much for watching. We are, of course, done and debunked now. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it today, please do consider subscribing to that channel. We're now on the march to 550,000 subscribers. Uh, and of course, if you really enjoyed this particular video, hit the thumbs up and share it as well. If the feeling takes you, it will of course be very much appreciated. Just enough time to once again thank Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Remember, you can visit surfshark.deal slash simandan and then use my code simandan to get that extra three months extra free. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow for another Saturday session where I'm looking at some of the funniest science exam answers ever. See you then.